Hi everyone, it's Library Linda, and I'd like to welcome you to this week's edition of Did You Know? Did you know that some of the origins of Halloween date back over 2,000 years? Did you know on November 1st that the ancient Celtics celebrated the festival of Samhain, which was the beginning of their new year? And did you know that they believed that at sundown the night before, that the boundaries between the living and the dead became blurred and the dead would walk the earth. They believed the good souls would come and visit your families and leave blessings and the bad souls would cause trouble and damage crops. So they would dress up as animals so that the bad souls wouldn't recognize them and would move on to other places. And did you know, at sundown on October 31st, any crops that were left on the field were set on fire. The farmers would light these fires because they felt any crops that were left on the field that the dead souls walked upon would be tainted and unfit for human consumption. And did you know, they threw the bones of the cattle that they consumed over the past year into the fire to nourish the soil. And these bone fires became known as bonfires. Did you know on May 13th of 609, Pope Boniface IV consecrated the Pantheon in Rome that was erected as a temple to the Roman gods, Jupiter, Venus, and Mars, and dedicated it to the Virgin Mary and all martyrs. And the Feast of the Virgin Mary and all martyrs was held on the same day as an ancient Roman festival called Lumeria where the Romans threw black beans around their homes to exercise evil spirits. And did you know in 731, Pope Gregory III changed the name of the holiday from All Martyrs Day to All Saints Day? And did you know that in 835, Pope Gregory IV is the one who moved the Feast of All Hallows or All Saints to November 1st? And did you know it was no coincidence when he moved the day to November 1st the same day as the Celtic holiday of Samhain. The Roman Catholics were trying to convert the Germanic and the Celtic people to Catholicism. And by having a holiday on the same day, it made it easier to convert them. And other names for All Saints Day are All Hallows Day, the Hallow Mass, which is a Holy Mass or a Mass of the Saints. And did you know Pope Gregory IV took it one step further and he made it a three-day festival, which included All Hallows' Eve, All Saints' Day, and All Souls' Day. And together they form the All Hallowtide. And did you know that in the 15th century, the tradition of souling became popular? This is where the priests would send young boys dressed as saints door to door, where they would collect soul cakes in return for praying for the souls of the people in the house. And did you know that in the 16th century, this became known as guising? And with guising, all of the children would dress up and put on a mask, otherwise known as a false face, and they would go door to door collecting food, money, or cakes for the poor. And did you know, in the 19th century, mumming became very popular. But mumming was done mostly by adults, and they would dress up and go door to door, where they would sing and dance, perform little skits, or tell jokes in return for some special treats, which may or may not be adult beverages. But mumming takes place on other holidays besides Halloween, like Christmas, Twelfth Night, and Shrove Tuesday. And it still takes place in other countries around the world, like Canada, England, Germany, Ireland, Scotland, and the Scandinavian countries. And did you know the tradition of carving jack-o'-lanterns came from the legend of Stingy Jack? The devil had come for Jack, but Jack asked for one more drink, but he didn't have any money to pay for it. So he asked the devil to turn himself into a coin so that he could pay for his drink. But Jack slipped that coin into his pocket, along with the cross, and didn't let the devil back out until he made a deal that he would leave him alone for at least 10 years. 
Ten years later, Jack sees the devil up in an apple tree and he carves a cross on the trunk of the tree and agrees to finally cut the tree down if the devil will leave him alone forever. So when Jack died, heaven wouldn't take him because he had made a deal with the devil. And the devil couldn't take him because he had agreed to leave Jack alone forever. But he gave him a flame of fire and placed it in a carved out turnip. And he is forever roaming the earth without a permanent home. So when the Irish immigrants moved to the United States, they brought the tradition of carving turnips with them, but they found it a lot easier to carve the native pumpkin than a turnip. I hope you enjoyed my Halloween edition of Did You Know? And I hope to see you again next time.